everyone welcome back to my channel in my last repaint video i shared with you guys how i created my strawberry cow repaint and i've been getting a few requests to show you guys a closer look at how i created the skirt for this doll so in today's video i wanted to share with you guys how i created the pattern for the skirt and how i put it together i'll be sharing with you guys the measurements that you'll need if you'd like to recreate the skirt for monster high as well as some advice on how to adjust the pattern if you're interested in creating it for another doll so without further ado let's get into it this skirt is pretty beginner friendly and the pattern is really easy to recreate. All you need are a series of rectangles. The first rectangle that we're going to use is for the main skirt panel. Mine is 7 inches long by 3 inches wide. The straps of the skirt are optional but for Monster High I used panels that were 2 and 3 quarters inches long by a half inch wide. Next we're going to create a waistband for the skirt. Mine is 3 inches long by 2 and a half inches wide. The crisscross lacing detail is also optional, but if you'd like to recreate it, you will also need some smaller panels that are 3 quarter inches long by 2 and a half inches wide. For the lace detailing, you will also need some silver hardware, I'm just going to be using some silver jump rings for that, and some very thin satin ribbon. Finally, the skirt will also need a closure. I'm using some self-adhesive velcro that I picked up at my local craft shop. Since the pattern is all simplified rectangles, it's really easy to adjust it for different types of doll bodies. Here's what to do if you'd like to recreate it for another type of doll. Start with the waistband. When folded in half, the waistband should be able to wrap all the way around the doll's waist with a little extra space in the back for the closure. You can adjust the width of the waistband piece to land wherever you like on the doll's torso. After you've cut the waistband piece, you can use it to decide how long you want the skirt panel to be. The main panel of the skirt should be about 3 times as long as the waistband panel, but you can make it longer if you'd like to make the skirt a little fuller. To get the width of the skirt panel, which is going to be the length that the skirt lands on on the doll, start by measuring at the doll's belly button. Once you know where you'd like the skirt to land, add about a centimeter for seam allowance. The optional waistband pieces that will hold the decorative lacing later are each about a third of the length of the waistband panel and half of the width since we won't be folding those in half. The straps of the skirt are also optional and they depend on where you'd like the waistband to land. Start by measuring where you'd like them to be attached and go around the back of the doll. The width can be adjusted to support the frame of different types of doll. Okay, now that we have a pattern, let's start sewing. I'm going to start by preparing the pieces that will hold the lacing later. Again, this is optional. I start by creating a crease line along the edge of the skirt panel. Using a very large needle, I create four holes going along the crease line, spaced apart for the size of jump ring that I'd like to use. After I've created the holes, I attach the jump rings by looping them through the holes and then securing them in the back. When both panels are prepared, we can sew them to the waistband. First, I fold the waistband in half and then I secure the panels to the waistband by sewing along the back. I refold the panels along the crease line and secure this piece down to the waistband as well. You can use a more decorative stitch for this if you'd like. After doing this to both sides, it's now time to attach the main skirt panel to the rest of the waistband. I leave a little extra space on the end so that I can overlap the closure later on. For the strawberry cow version of the skirt, I added some lace to the bottom of the skirt panel before I started sewing it together. I'm going to be skipping that step in this one. As I sew the main skirt panel along the waistband, I create small pleats to help use up some of the extra room. Ok, 
Okay, here's how it looks so far. Now we can flip it inside out and close up the back of the skirt. I usually sew about a third of the way up from the bottom. Try the skirt onto your doll to make sure that it fits correctly and to see where you'd like to put the closure. Now we're going to attach a strap to the doll. For the first version of the skirt that I created, I sewed the straps first by folding them in half with the good side facing inwards, and then I closed up the seam to create a tube shape. Once the strap was closed, I flipped them inside out, but that was a lot easier said than done. For this version of the skirt, I'm going to take a slightly different approach. This time, I'm going to fold the straps in half with the good sides facing outwards, and I'm going to be using a very very small stitch length and some lace to secure them. All that's left to do now is to lace the ribbon through the hardware. You can do this in any pattern that you like and tie it off in a bow at the end or glue it down to the back like I did. And here it is all done! Let me know what you guys thought of this sewing tutorial in the comment section down below and if you'd like to see more videos like these from me. If you recreate this skirt, I'd love to see it so please tag me on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and I hope to see you next time. Bye!